All right, let's say we want to export this model, resurface it, re-UV it, bring it back in, and reproject our textures onto that. Luckily, with Reality Capture, it's super simple. All you got to do is either go to the Workflow tab or the Reconstruction tab, doesn't matter which one, and click this Mesh button here. That's going to allow you to export this mesh. Let's go ahead and switch this over to Wavefront OBJ, and just go to the folder you want to. I'm going to go to our Resurf folder here, and we'll just save this as Girl Statue RC OBJ. Uh, default settings should be fine. And let's go ahead and import that into ZBrush. So when I'm in ZBrush, I'm going to hit the comma key to get rid of that light box. We're going to go over here to Tool, Import, go to our folder. Double click that to import it. And I'm not going to go over an exhaustive way to clean up our mesh. If you want to see that, go to the photo scan videos, and I go a little bit more in depth on using Booleans and DynaMesh to kind of clean up our meshes. This one I'm going to go ahead and keep simple. I'm going to go into edit mode here. Let's switch over to a matte cap. And incidentally, if you want to know more about ZBrush in general, just go to my YouTube channel here, go to my playlist, go to Intro to ZBrush Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. That'll walk you through the basics of ZBrush and uh, get you up and running. Uh, but like I said before, we're going to go ahead and keep this simple. So right now what I'm going to do is hold down Control-Shift. We're going to go to Select Rectangle, hold down the Alt key. We're just going to clip off this entire bottom portion here, and we'll call that Cleaned Up. I'm going to go ahead and go to Delete Hidden. That's going to be Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. And I'm going to go to my Subtool here duplicate this subtool because I want to use this original to project back to. And then with our duplicate selected, I'm going to go into solo mode here, and let's go ahead and resurface this or retopologize it. Uh, probably the easiest way to do that is to go down here to your geometry, go to Ziri Mesher. I'm going to drop my adaptive size down, just let's say 28. That's uh, It'll still respect a lot of this edge curvature, but it's not going to go overboard, and it's also going to keep our poly count a little bit more accurate. So if I say drop this target polygon count to like say 15k and then hit enter and then hit zero mesh, uh, ZBrush will go ahead and re-topologize this object using all quads. And while this is re-topologizing, zero meshing this for me, uh, for me I'm going to go into this folder here where we saved our, uh, exported our OBJ from Reality Capture, and you're going to see an RC info file in there. Uh, what that RC info file is telling Reality Capture is a uh, coordinate position so that when we re-import this object, it's going to put it right back into where that point cloud data is uh, so that the cameras are looking right at our object and it's going to transfer those textures appropriately. When I go to export this later, I'm just going to export over this uh, girl statue RC OBJ in here just so that the name matches this uh, RC info. If you wanted to, you can export this as a different name and then I think you can just rename this as your file name.obj.rc info. Uh, but like I said before, I'm just going to save over this OBJ, so no big deal. Uh, so here's our Z remeshed version of it. If it's still too high, all you got to do is you can go down here to half and hit Z remesh again. Now, before I did that, what I should have done. Let's go ahead and undo that. I'm going to go back up here. I have both of these eyeballs turned on. I don't, I can't see them because I have solo turned on, but as long as those eyeballs are on, I can still go down here to Subtool, Project, and hit Project All, and that'll go ahead and start projecting my details back. So now when I go down here and Ziri Mesh half, our point count went point count went from 15 down to like 8. So now if I do another Project All, uh, we're going to start getting a sum of our details back. If we look at this, um, this mesh looks fine, so we can use this as our low-res mesh if we want to. Uh, but if we want to get that high-res detail back in our model, all we got to do is hit Control d which is going to do a divide operation here, and then just hit Project All. Hit Control d again, hit Project All. Hit Control d again, Project All. And now we're up at uh, about half a million. Our original uh, poly count here was 750,000. Our new one is half a million. If we go out of polyframe here and we kind of zoom in and we switch between these, uh, there's a little bit more teal detail in our original, so I'm going to subdivide one more time. That brings us 2.152 million points, and I'm going to do another project all. There we go. So now when I switch between these with solo on, you shouldn't see uh, any difference at all. Uh, so now we have a brand new Z remeshed uh, object here, and so if we go through here, we can see we can go down to subdivision level 1, which is very low polygon, and then all the way back up to our high resolution detailed object. Now unfortunately, this new one doesn't have any UVs. Easily remedied, all I got to do is go over here to our Z plugin. I'm going to go to UV Master. And with this uh, new object selected, with, again, with our subdivision history, I'm going to go work on clone. That's going to copy a clone out here. And if I click on polyframe, you're going to see it snaps us automatically to our low res. And in order to help uh, ZBrush UV Master out with this UV, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Control Shift, go into Select Lasso. Again, if you need the basics of ZBrush, go to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not going to be covering that here, but it should be pretty easy to follow. Hold down Control Shift and go to Select Lasso for our lasso visibility. 
and we're basically going to grab all of the polygons here that make up her head, control W to polygon uh, to give that uh, head a polygroup here, and we can hold down control shift and isolate the body. We can also do that with masking, so if we hold down control and go to the mask lasso, now I can go through here and I can like say mask lasso out one of her arms. I go to the side here and unmask this side. Go ahead and unmask this here. So now we've got one of our arms masked. We hold down control alt and tap on our mesh. That'll sharpen that mask up. We can hit control W. That'll polygroup that mask, masked area. So now you have three different polygroups. Let's do one more. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the arm. We'll use visibility again for this one. Hold down control shift and then hold down alt and that'll turn it into a subtractive. You can go ahead and get rid of all of this mesh here. We just want to isolate that arm. And let's see if there's any more we want to add. Nope. Okay, it looks pretty good. So we'll hit Control W. That'll do a polygroup. So now we have one polygroup, two polygroup, three polygroups, and then four for her body. So now we can go ahead and unwrap this if we want to. If you want to split this up even more, take her legs or the bunny out, uh, feel free to do that. But I think this will be fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off symmetry. I'm going to turn on polygroups. I'm going to enable control painting, and I'm going to attract by ambient occlusion. And that'll attract our seam lines uh, into the shaded areas. Uh, so with all these options selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit Unwrap. There we go. And if you want to see those UVs, hit Flatten. And there we go. There's our flattened UVs. If you want to move these things around, uh, again, you can go watch the Intro to ZBrush series. You can also hit W, Control, Tap any of these, and you can move these shells around, rotate them around. Uh, it's just geometry, so you can just move this stuff around however you want. A lot of different ways to affect your UVs, but honestly, these are fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Unflatten, and then we're going to hit Copy UVs. Go back to our original mesh here. So here's our high-res mesh. We're going to go to Paste UVs. That's going to paste our UVs into our newly reprojected mesh with our subdivision history. If we want to check those, go all the way down to the Texture Map. Do Create, New from UV Check. And now you're going to see here's our UVs. They look fine. Uh, we can turn our texture off. And I think we're good to go. So now all we need to do is take this OBJ that we have selected here. Go to X and go ahead and turn off colorize, by the way. Go to export. And again, I'm just going to save right over this. You don't have to, but if you don't save over this, you're going to need to rename that other file. Uh, so we're in that resurface folder. I'm just going to double click this one. We're going to replace it. And as it's writing that, it's writing over this one. And of course, this uh, OBJ file matches the RC info file, which is what we want it to do. Again, if you saved it as a new file, you're going to need to rename this info file to your new name. And now we can head back over into PhotoScan. And underneath the reconstruction, we go to Import Model. And we're just going to grab that OBJ here. There we go. Now, if for some reason you imported an object and it had UVs and you didn't want to use those under UVs, uh, just go to Reconstruction and hit Unwrap. And that'll just re-unwrap it for you. Uh, but we, I do want to use these UVs. What I'm going to do now is go under the Reconstruction tab. We're going to hit Texture. And that's going to head, going to go ahead and reproject from our cameras, from our images, onto these new UVs. Alrighty, so now we've got our new UVs and our new textures applied to those. Got to say they're looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to reconstruction. We'll go to mesh, and this one I'm going to save as an FBX file. Go ahead and keep that on TIFF. Hit OK. And hopping over into ZBrush, we're going to Z plugin FBX import. We'll go ahead and import that last one we just made, the resurfaced one with the 8K. And we'll go ahead and compare it to the original 8K. I'm going to grab my other comparison files here that we've done. So here's our original reality capture and then all of our photo scan ones. I'm going to go over here to append. And we'll go ahead and append that one. And we'll go ahead and delete that one there. And then with that one selected, we can go ahead and rename this one as RC. Resurf. Let's go down here to Deformation and Unify. Go out of solo mode here. And what I'm going to do to align these up is I'm going to go ahead and turn the textures off for this one and our original one here. I'm going to hit W. I'm going to hold down Alt and then tap the rabbit eyeball. And we're going to align these rabbit eyeballs up. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, orient and scale these things so that they're a little bit more comparable. All right, good enough. So now I'm going to go down here and we'll turn our textures back on. 
go ahead and throw on our skin shader here. And now if we zoom way in, so here's our original, we're in solo mode here. So here is our original UVs. And if you remember those UVs, they used about a third of the texture place here. And then we went through, and again, we didn't do a great job. We just did a quick uh, UV pass, but you're gonna see these UVs using it quite a bit. Oh, and I didn't realize uh, we actually baked out 16K. So I need to go check my settings there. So these are significantly higher, but looking between these two, yeah, it's quite a bit more detail there. So anyway, new UVs, new textures being baked, not too shabby. Looks really good, did a really, really great job. One last thing here, if you go to reconstruction, hit the settings button and you go down here, you're gonna see under coloring and texturing that the import and model default texture resolution is six to six is set to 16K, so that's why in ZBrush, uh, when you went and looked at this, this was set to 16K. So if you weren't looking for a 16K texture, you just wanted to do an 8K, make sure you go into that setting and change this uh, from 16K to say 8K.